Are you ready? Because I am. What if I said no? It will kill. The Executioner's Sword. The Executioner's Sword performed its bloody work in 16th century Central Europe. Unlike combat swords, this lethal blade features a straight, double-edged cutting blade with a blunt tip, perfect for swiftly chopping off the heads of criminals. This deadly weapon was used on many aristocratic felons rather than the ax, since it allowed the victim to meet his end in a dignified kneeling position rather than laying it face down with his head on the block. While the executioner's sword fell out of use in the early 18th century, this gruesome sword is still wielded in the 2019 video game Mordhau. Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. The executioner's sword. That word alone just gives you visions of decapitated heads. <laughs> so to find out what kind of lethal damage your executioner's sword can do, I'll deliver some well, lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Nathan, is it time? It's time, have fun. Just a little off the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nathan. First up, this is a heavy beast. It is so forward heavy that you need two hands to control that. Now, your handle construction is smooth. I'll give you that. But it also feels a little bit rounded over here where it actually gives me much more control sideways than it does this way. But overall, your weapon, sir, it will kill. <laughs> awesome. All right, Gunner, your turn. So you ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Gunner, let's talk about your executioner's sword over here. Your blade right here has a finer grind. So it makes it a little bit lighter. And the edge that you have here, when it came to that skull, just glided into that. Overall, sir, your executioner's sword, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the skull and bone chop. Now to test the overall construction of your blades, as well as how they feel while they're being used, I'll be chopping into these skulls and that nasty giraffe bone. Nathan, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. <laughs> Holy giraffe. <laughs> All right, Nathan, so right off, man, this thing is heavy. Once you get it moving, it's going, but controlling it's tough. Having said that, your edge held it beautifully. It's still just as sharp as when I started, which is pretty darn sharp. So good job on that. Thanks. I like sharp things. Gunner, ready? What if I said no? <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> you <laughs> exactly. don't watch the show much, do you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so gonna right off, lighter blade, easier to control. A lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got more handle here. Now your blade, it's got some compacting on the edges, but I wouldn't run my finger down this edge. It's still plenty sharp. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. All right, bladesmiths. This is the sharpest test, the jackfruit and water jug slice. Nathan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. All right, let's do this. Nathan, as far as the downward chop, 
It's a very clean cut, easy, no resistance whatsoever. Now, when I was cutting, as soon as I met the resistance of the water, it kind of rolled on my hand. But anything that it did have contact with, it was able to cut. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gunner, your turn, so you ready? Yes, sir, I am. Let's do this. All right, Gunner, the handle construction you have here is wide and ovoid enough to where when I hold onto it, I can really tell where the edge is, and it's much easier to control a blade like this. In the slice, you can see that cuts nicely. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. Well, Bladesmiths, only one of you can leave here with the title of Fortune Fire Champion and get that check for $10,000. Now, the judges discussed your blades, and they made a final decision. Today's Forge and Fire champion is... Gunner, congratulations. Now, Nathan, you fought hard, man, but unfortunately your blade didn't make the cut. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, bud. Well, I'm gonna have to find a different way to take my wife to go see Bigfoot, but we're still gonna go. <laughs> well, Gunner, that makes you the Forge and Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I just won Forged and Fire. Feeling good? Well, I mean, I, I've never thought I would make it this far from day one. I don't necessarily think that I'm a better smith than any of these other guys. It just worked out in my favor today. Uh, as far as the money, uh, after football season ends, my wife and I will probably take a long weekend somewhere. The Ski of Ona. Rising to popularity in Italy during the 16th and 17th centuries, the Schiavona became the trusted weapon for mercenaries recruited to guard the Venetian head of state. The sword's long blade included multiple fullers to lighten its weight, while its straight double edge made it conducive for deadly thrusts and cuts. The most eye-catching feature of this blade was its basket hilt with multiple pieces of steel that intertwined to protect the hand from brutal slashes. Its attractive yet deadly qualities are why the Schiavona can still be found today in popular games such as Assassin's Creed. All right, Bladesmiths, as you can see, I'm still recovering from an injury. So, to be my arm today and to have the pleasure of testing your weapon, I'd like to bring back one of my favorite students, my brother, RJ Markaida. All right, Brad, the one issue I have about your handle right here, it did cause some issues by rubbing against the thumb right there. But more importantly, it is a sharp blade for slashing and thrusting. It will kill. Cool. Yeah. Jeff, you ready? Let's do this. Ooh. One right here. Okay. All right, Jeff. A little bit on the inside of your basket hilt right there. It did dig in into his knuckles. But overall, if we're talking about a killing blade here with good balance and the kind of destruction it did, it will kill. Thank good you. job. All right, bladesmiths. Next up, it's a strength test. Ben. To test your Shibona's basket and blade, I'm gonna punch into these terracotta pots and then chop into these birch logs. And remember, it's not what happens to the vase or the wood, it's what happens to your blade. Brad, you're up first, you ready? My Shibona is definitely ready. Brad, 
once I started chopping into that log, it was just going the whole time. There is a tiny little deformation right there. It's pretty narrow. You can hear it, you know. All in all, it's sharp, and it's a good chopper. Nicely done. Uh, yeah. All right, Jeff, you're up. You ready? Let's do this. Jeff, this is a heck of a chopper. It's got a lot of forward weight. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but not too much in general and in total. It held up very well. Nice job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is our sharpness test, a rope and sandbag slash. What I'll do to test the edges of your blade is slice the rope, releasing the sandbag, then cut the bag. What we want to see are good clean cuts through the rope and clean cuts through the bag. Brad, you're up first. You ready? Ready. Oh. <laughs> okay, Brett, on the cuts, pass through the rope with no problem. This blade has a beautiful edge, a fine cutter. Excellent, well done. Thank you. Jeff, you ready? Let's get it on. All right, let's do this. I think right now we're almost dead even. Couldn't be any closer. All right, Jeff, what I like about your blade is its look, this industrial look. It's cool. It didn't slice all the way through the bag, but it cuts very cleanly. Nicely done. Thank you. Brad, Jeff, you are both extraordinary weaponsmiths, but there can only be one Forge to Fire champion. Jeff, congratulations. You are our newest Forge to Fire champion. Brad, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Brad, this is probably the most difficult hilt design we have sent any of our Smiths home to do. And you both did a really nice job. And we had to look at the finest of details. And that was that rolled edge you took in the strength test. And that's why we've got to send you home. Brad, please surrender your weapon. I did the best that I could, and I put every single bit of effort into my blade. and. Jeff, I hope we become friends forever. I definitely have a lot to learn from you. And I'm just so close to being the champion. Jeff, you are the new Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? My heart's pounding out of my chest. This is what I came here to do. Please present your weapon to the judges. I feel freaking awesome. This is everything. This is what I want. It's perfect. I heard Brendan might have called me Magic Mike, but I tell you what, the magic is floating, baby. The magic is floating. The Headhunter's Axe. The Headhunter Axe is both a tool and a weapon of the native Igorot tribe who hail from the mountains of the Philippines. Featuring a sharp spike on one side that is used to pierce shields and armor, it also contained a wide, lethal axe head on the other side designed to swiftly decapitate enemies in the heat of battle. An intimidating weapon, tribes would display the heads of their victims to strike fear into their enemies. The legacy of this deadly axe lives on today and can be seen in the video game State of Decay, Breakdown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keel Test. The Igorot Headhunter's Axe a weapon that I've always fantasized about because it's very close to my Filipino heritage. To find out what kind of lethal damage your headhunter's axe will do, I will take your weapon and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Jordan, are you ready? Because I am. So let's do this. <laughs> right now, I'm pretty intimidated. If that spike hits the backbone or the skull or anything like that, I think it'd snap right off. <laughs> All 
right, Jordan, let's talk about your headhunter's axe here. Your edges here are very sharp. With every strike, it dug in very deep into this ballistics dummy. The spike you have here, even digging into the skull, did not bend. It feels good in the hand, and more importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Jesse, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm feeling nervous. I'm worried about my ax head flying off the socket, because those bones are dense. You know, going into a human skull is not an easy task. He headbutted me. <laughs> All right, Jesse, let's talk about your headhunter's axe over here. First up, the handle construction. Somebody did some research in some Polynesian tattoos there. Looks good, and it feels good in the hand. Your edges here penetrated very deep into this ballistics dummy. Now, your spike here, not only did it penetrate the skull, but it also cut it, and it stayed true. Overall, sir, your headhunter's axe Little kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our strength test, the bamboo and skull chop. Now you get two totally different materials here. You got the springy bamboo that likes to bounce things back, and the skulls that like to break edges. So we're going to test both ends and the overall construction of your headhunter's axes. During your smile, you're up first. How about that? <laughs> yes, sir. OK, let's do it. Jordan, nice job. Take a breath now. Okay. <laughs> now everything held up nicely. Everything's tight, doesn't look like anything moved. Your edges are still sharp. I mean, the fact that you made this thing light, tough, and in Damascus in three days, that's a heck of a feat. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, how you feel after seeing that? Not good. <laughs> Not good? It'll be fine, don't worry okay. about it. one, man. All right, Jesse, on the plus side, it felt great in the hand, and your edges held up just fine. But just all the shock wave from the force of those strikes split the handle almost in half. So definitely not going to be able to continue testing with this weapon. Well, Jesse, we absolutely hate to see that happen. Phenomenal job on your blade itself. But unfortunately, you had a catastrophic failure when your handle broke. And for that reason, we can no longer continue testing your weapon. I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. I felt a little heartbroken seeing something that I put so much work into would be broke. But I came onto this competition just to prove that I can compete with some of the best bladesmiths out there. And I know I've already accomplished that, so I still feel like I'm going home a winner. Well, Jordan, you survived the test. Your blade came out on top, so congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and there is a $10,000 check waiting for you outside that door. Very well done. <laughs> I just won Forge and Fire. I don't really know what to say right now. Sasquatch is kind of my mascot, and so I feel like that's a Sasquatch-worthy ax. A falchion. Ha, 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 yeah.
One of the most popular weapons during the Middle Ages, the falchion was a commoner sword that found widespread use both on and off European battlefields. A thick and heavy sword, falchions featured either a straight or slightly curved blade with a single sharp edge, making it well suited for the vicious close quarters combat of medieval wars. Eventually, this broad and deadly hacking weapon transitioned from a combat sidearm to a hunting sword like other historic European weapons of its time. Although the falchion disappeared from battlefields and hunting grounds, its legacy virtually lives on in video games like Warhammer, Vermintide 2, and Dark Souls 3. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do according to its historic design, I will try to cut this big carcass in half. Wayne, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, nice. man. One and done. Well now. All right, Wayne. Your falchion is beautiful. It is sharp. It cuts through the spine and all the way through the pig. It's a little bit heavier for a one-handed weapon, but it is well balanced. Overall, sir, it will kill. <laughs> awesome. All right, Mark, your turn, sir. Are you ready? Let's give it a shot. All right, Mark, let's talk about your falchion here. It's a nice, lighter blade. Your edges are sharp enough to cut through spine, but the problem I have here is your guard. Your edges here are not rounded. They dig in right here where the thumb is. But your blade, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I'll be attacking our armored dummy here. This test is not about what your swords do to that armor. It's about what that armor does to your swords. Wayne, you're up. You ready? Let's do it. First off, Wayne, your edge has taken some small chips, some small rolls, but it's very, very minor damage. There's still a sharp edge here. All in all, it held up beautifully. All right, thank you. So, Mark, I got to ask, what's with the shirt? I got married in this shirt, actually. Uh, it's, you know, it's my formal wear. All right. Well, are you ready for the test? I am. OK. So first off, the blade is still solid. You did get some minor rolling, but the blade still has an edge. Down here is the problem. Your guard, these edges are not just square, they're sharp. But the blade held up. Good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths. Now it's time to find out if there's any sharpness left to your weapons. To test the edge of your weapon, I'm going to cut through this gauntlet of sandbags. Wayne, you're up first. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right, Wayne, your weapon is sharp. On every swing, it cuts and slashes nicely. And most importantly, aside from being smurfed, it will cut. Awesome. All right, Mark, it's your turn. You ready? I am. Let's have fun. Mark, and you can see on both these bags, it cut deeply. On the second bag, on the swing back over there, it must have hit a dull spot. It did rip parts of the bag, but it didn't cut all the way in. 
but overall, it is sharp and it will cut. Thank you. Wayne, Mark, it was a tight decision. Wayne, congratulations. You're the Forged and Fire champion. Mark, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Please surrender your weapon and leave the forge. From start to finish, this whole thing was a learning process for me, and I honestly think I have gotten years' worth of experience and feedback in just a short time. Great job, man. Yeah, you too. This experience was life-changing. Wayne, congratulations. You are one badass, everlasting bladesmith and our new Forged and Fire champion. Good job, brother. Yeah! Yes! <laughs> yeah! Please, at this time, present your blade to our judges. So I did it. Man, I wanted it. Next for me, I'm going to get back on the same thing that's led me to this point, which is just nonstop going full throttle. And I'm just going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep getting better and better. The Zweihander. The Zweihander, which means two-hander in German, was a massive sword wielded by Swiss and German mercenary armies in the 16th century. Sometimes stretching to over six feet in length, the Zweihander was a long sword, featuring an extended grip and broad guard. As European armies employed more pikes and pole arms on the battlefield, the Zweihander emerged as a counterweapon. This enormous sword was used to break up pike formations by cutting spear ends and opening up holes in enemy lines. Due to its size, the Zweihander was only wielded by the biggest and most audacious soldiers. If these soldiers survived charges into enemy spears, they would often be paid double for their substantial risk. The Zweihander eventually faded from the battlefield, but survives today in games such as Dark Souls. Your Zweihanders are big, so we came to a big open space to test them. Up first, the sharpness test. Dave? Now, the Zweihander was known as a weapon of intimidation. To test the sharpness of your edge, I'm going to cut into this bundle of sugar cane twice, once with either side. Jay, you're up first. Are you ready? Ready as I'm ever going to be. <laughs> it's got a lot of weight to it, but Obviously, it's plenty sharp. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Steven, you're up. Are you ready? Can't wait. Jay's weapon did really well cutting through the sugar canes. I'm not nervous about mine, but, you know, I don't know if it's going to cut better than his. His cut real strong. It's light. It's easy to wield. That guard, it's almost where it's into you when you're swinging it. You can see it cut deep and clean. It looks like the blade held up beautifully. So nice job. Thank you. Bladesmiths, the Zweihander was a weapon of war. Big weapon, big damage. I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Let's see how much damage your weapon can do. Jay, you're up first. You ready? Go for it. Let's do this. It is a heavy weight, and it's harder to manipulate with multiple blows. But on the thrust, I was able to go in one side and all the way on the opposite side of the dummy. This, sir, will kill. Thank you. Steven, you're up next. You ready? Absolutely. Let's do this. Brutal. Okay, Steve, the edge of your sword is sharp enough to lacerate all the way into the ribs. And on the power strike, that would disembowel and ruin this person. That's the idea. This sword will kill. 
Good job. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is the strength test. Now, the Zweihander was often used against pike formations. So I'm going to take your Zweihanders and go against a rack of pikes here five times with each of your blades. See how far I can break through. Jay, you're up. Are you ready? Ready. So after two tests, Steven and I are pretty neck and neck. So I feel pretty nervous because this next test should really determine who's going to take home the prize. Wow. <laughs> when you start swinging this thing, it moves things out of its way. I don't see any damage to your edge. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Steve, you're up. Do it. OK. Obviously, it's a good cutter to actually bend into that wood and split that right down the middle. Very easy to wield because of its light weight. But I think we've bent just a little bit. It's bent in two directions. And there is a crack now developing in the handle. Gentlemen, we've got a lot to discuss. We'll see you back at the forge. I'm concerned. I had a warp in my blade, so I don't know who's going to end up with the win. Bladesmiths, the judges have made their final decision. It's time to declare one of you the Forged and Fire champion. Jay, congratulations. Steven, unfortunately, your sword did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. I'm disappointed. I really wanted to win, uh, but that's OK. I love being at the Forge. It's hot, it's dirty, you'll smell funny, but it is so rewarding. Jay, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel like my heart's about to burst out of my chest. <laughs> well, it's the heaviest weapon I've ever had to wield in this competition. Very well balanced and a powerful weapon, too. Thank you. In the way you built your handle, that, that tells me a lot about the way that you make things. The wood is fitted on and then wrapped with leather with these reinforcing pieces underneath. That's the proper way to construct it. Oh, thank you. Well, Jay, in exchange for that sword and those socks, <laughs> and we'll be receiving that check for $10,000. When they announced that I was the winner, it felt really good. I had people tell me, you know, you're, you're good at what you do, but I always have this kind of self-doubt to make it all the way to the end and be the champion. I'm so happy. <laughs>